Let's spend some time today understanding what device, files, and Linux are, and why they're important to us, and how they make Linux systems run, specifically with our hardware. First, let's list out some devices. Well, there's quite a few devices in the dev folder, so we're going to narrow some of these down in order to talk about specifics. So in order to see some of these devices, what we can do is actually type out cat slash proc devices. This will list out any block devices or character devices on our system. Things like the console, the I squared C bus, and USB devices are all considered character devices. We'll talk about those in a moment, but we also have block devices, which is basically anything with storage, much like your storage disk or hard drive. So let's talk about the four main types of device files in Linux. One is going to be a block device. This means when communicating to the specific type of device, it will talk, a program will communicate through the device file with the device in blocks or small chunks of data of a fixed size or also known as a block size. For example, like we said earlier, a storage device, like what you might see installed under SDA. Number two, character device files. These types of devices communicate by reading or writing between user space and a device, typically using character sets. And you cannot access this information once it's been received or delivered by user space programs. Three, pipe device files. These again are similar to character device files, but typically include another process device instead of reaching out to a kernel module or driver. So think of this as intercommunications between apps. Then we have number four, socket device files. These are Unix based sockets and typically perform intercommunications using socket based protocols. Think about LAN connections via ethernet or printer connections via ethernet. Those are all socket communications. Very good, now that we know some of the basic types of device files, let's talk about some that you may find on your system. If we clear things out and list out in dev, SR. So SR0, what is that? Well, this is a mounted device file that allows you to communicate between a CD-ROM and your user space programs. So if a program needs access to a CD, it can use this inner layer of dev SR0 to communicate down to the CD and get information out of it. That's why device files are so important. It allows your system to communicate to a specific piece of hardware through an endpoint, and that's really it. In Linux, a device file is just a special file that allows you, that is used to represent a device like a CD-ROM and helps it connect to the system. Device files are usually used by user space programs to access hardware operations such as reading and writing a CD. Another example would be, let's see if we can list it out, dev TTY. Plenty of these on the system. These are what are known as terminals and or councils of the system. Whenever we're writing out to the TTY, we are writing from or to a specific device file which accesses a terminal and actually displays contents to us. So for example, if we're on our computer and we're getting things displayed in just a simple terminal or console, well, our system is actually writing through these TTYs in order to interact and respond to the user space program that is actually generating the text in front of our eyes. Let's keep going and let's move on to another one we're all familiar with. If we do ls dev and we start typing an s, Yours might be an NVMe drive, so it might not be a storage disk. So let's go on to another one that we're all familiar with. If we do ls dev, and I'm just gonna type in sda, this here, this is known as a device file that communicates out to a storage disk. So you can think of this as the comms to your SSD, hard drive, or NVMe, solid state drive. Either way, yes, those get a file that they communicate through as well through dev, and typically that's SD, some letter, I'm gonna call it X, specifically here, A, and that's how we get information back to the system so we can use it and interact with various different programs on 
the system, and now you're really starting to get an understanding of different types of device files that we have access to and how important they really are. Insert add here. So I did talk about NVMe. This is not necessarily fair to put it in this category. Instead, NVMe actually has its own device file, device that it communicates through. So let's talk about that here. And I'm not gonna have one of those devices on here, but it goes NVMe. It might start with NVMe and then have some port or socket, and then it might have some port number. But either way, this is what's known as non-volatile memory. And this allows you to talk to your NVMe storage disk, again, through dev NVMe, some port back to your user system space, user space or system where programs can get a hold of what's actually on your storage disk. Very good. Finally, the last one I want to, finally, the last type of important device I want to talk about. Of course, there's many, many devices, but really some of the main ones that we understand and know about is the TTY USB or ACM or anything with a TTYS. So we're just replacing this portion. It could be TTYS or TTY ACM. These are what are known as serial devices. And these serial devices, like a serial COM printer, would communicate through something like a USB or a serial port, which would be denoted by S, again, with your system and the system programs. That would look something like dev T T Y U S B zero or some other port number, whatever you're actually, depending on how many devices you actually have. Really the takeaway here is the two most important device file types your system uses on Linux are character and block devices. To get more in-depth character device files, also known as character special files are used to represent devices that handle a data stream. And these can be things like serial ports or terminals. And then finally the block devices to get a little more specific are also known as block special files and represent devices that handle data in blocks such as hard drives and flash drives. Device files are typically stored in the dev directory and are accessed using the input output IO functions in the standard C library or using in the C using C code or other system calls and other languages. And you can tell how important they are for us to communicate back to our hardware. Well, hopefully you learned something about these special device files on Linux. Let me know in the comment section below if you did. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe below for more Linux tips, tricks, hints, tips and tricks, including kernel updates and other various content. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.